15 tips and tricks for infinite flight. Let's go ahead and dive straight into it. Number one, quickly respond to ATC. When ATC sends you a message, instead of actually clicking on the ATC menu, you can simply hold down on the flashing ATC icon and it will respond to the message automatically without you having to do anything else. Number two, using the brakes correctly. Now, for those of you who don't know this one, we have a rudder brake. This therefore means you can hold down on the rudder and drag down ever so slightly to increase the percentage of braking. So no more using that parking brake to slow down because after all, it's called a parking brake for a reason. VFR and IFR cruising altitudes. Being displayed on the screen right now are the IFR and VFR cruising altitudes. If we take a look at the IFR cruising altitudes, you can see that if you're flying at a head in between zero or 179, you should be flying at odd altitudes. Those being, for example, 5,000, 7,000 or 9,000. You get the idea, right? And then obviously, if you're flying ahead in between 180 to 359, you should be flying at an even altitude. So for example, 2,000, 4,000, 6,000 or 8,000 or maybe even 32,000. VFR altitudes are very similar. All you have to do is add 500 feet. Pick an aircraft before selecting a gate. This will then therefore show you what gates that aircraft you have selected fits at at the airport which you have chosen. Ones highlighted in blue means, well, you can spawn at those gates. But the ones highlighted in red means, nope, you 100% can't go there because the aircraft is most likely too big. Zooming in with the hard view. This one is very simple and also very, very useful. Select the cockpit view. Then on systems, scroll down to interface and click HUD on. As you can see, it'll bring the HUD up on the screen. And then all you have to do is go back down to the camera icon and drag it upwards, which you can see we're doing right now, to the point where there's no cockpit and we are in an exterior view with the ability to zoom in. So it's just like the HUD, but you're able to zoom in. This is very helpful for those who are struggling to see the runway or maybe a smaller device from a from a quite a distance away. Always check your flight plan for close fixes. Close waypoints or fixes, whatever you'd like to call them, can cause quite an issue. Some of you may have experienced this, but the aircraft can sometimes overshoot a waypoint, which results in the aircraft doing a complete 360 without you realizing burning fuel, which you don't want to burn, especially if you put in a very, very certain amount, which could lead you to running out of fuel when you get closer to your destination. So before setting off on your flying adventure, always check your flight plan for close fixes. And if there are any, just be sure to delete one of the two. Custom camera presets. Now, a lot of you probably know what this is. This was a feature added not too long ago. But for those of you who don't know, if you drag the camera icon along to the free cam section where you would usually be able to go into the free cam, you can swipe upwards to exterior and interior drones. You can then position these cameras to wherever you would like and that will stay there for the entire flight unless you move it. So if you want them cool wing views, this is exactly what you do and they will stay there for the entire duration. This therefore then takes us onto the next little trick slower free cam now for those of you who are pros of the free cam this probably won't apply to you but i know some people do struggle with the free cam and its speeds because it can be very fast what you may not know is the free cam in general versus the interior and exterior drone preset cams has a slight difference with speed you can test this out for yourself but the camera does certainly move slower and it's also a free cam but just be aware that the interior and exterior drone cam does have a limit on how far you can go from the aircraft share your replays with your friends now, this is obviously a very well-known feature as well, but for those of you who don't know this, you can very easily email or airdrop or whatever you want to do with your replay file over to your friends so you can watch each other's landings, which, I don't know, that's just kind of cool, especially if you're doing some sort of competition for a giveaway. You can also share your replays to appeal violations. Get in grade 5 fast. Now, I have actually made a video on probably one of the fastest ways to get grade 5, which I'll link in the top right corner of the screen right now. I won't go ahead and explain. I'll let you go and watch that video after this one. But it's definitely worth the watch if you really want to get to grade 5. High definition screenshots. 
Now, for those of you who don't know that this feature exists, instead of just screenshotting your flights like you normally would screenshot any other app on your phone or iPad, in the replay mode, there is a little designated button for screenshots, which will give you a very, very, very high quality screenshot rather than just taking, you know, your average screenshot. So yeah, if you do want them really crisp HD photos, well, this is the way to go. Always, I repeat, always calibrate prior to taking off. Now, I've seen some pretty embarrassing things on the expert server, or any server for that matter, where somebody, you know, forgets to calibrate their device and they either skyrocket or plant the nose of the aircraft into the ground. You can do this by clicking on the pause screen and pressing calibrate. Minimum aircraft separation. When flying on infinite flight, it's a very nice idea to maintain a decent separation from any other aircraft around you. Not only would this stop you from getting a violation in a controlled airspace, but it also maintains that realism if you are trying to be realistic. The minimum separation is 3 nautical miles from each other laterally, or 1000 feet vertically. Very easy to understand and remember. Always tune into the ATIS, the Automatic Terminal Information Service. The ATIS will provide you with some very useful information prior to your departure, and it'll also help you file your departure out of an airport. It will tell you things like the winds, runways in use, what information you have, and a few other useful things. Warsaw Frederick Airport, Addis Information Hotel, Time 1337 Zulu, Wind 260 at 13, Visibility 21, Temperature 3, Dew Point minus 6, QNH 1004 Remarks, No Pattern Work Allowed Landing Runway 33, Departing Runway 29, Dot Advise on Initial Contact, You Have Information Hotel. Use of lights. Now, this is a very, very important one. I feel like I need to sort of drum this into some people's heads because, well, I, I've seen people, yeah, not using lights the way they should be used across multiple servers on Infinite Flight. Please, 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 if you're not too sure on how to use the lights in Infinite Flight, just listen to what I'm about to tell you. Strobes and landing lights are not supposed to be on at the gate or when you're taxiing. I can't stress that enough. Before starting your engines, turn on your beacon lights. The beacon lights are a signal to the ground crew and aircraft around you that your engines are about to be started or are running already. The beacon lights should always be on when the aircraft's engines are running. Nav lights, yes, the red and green lights on the end of the wings, are supposed to be on when the electrical power is on and keep them on until completely shut down. Nav lights can also be used when taxiing or flying at night. Landing lights should be turned on when you are entering the runway and should stay on until you are above 10,000 feet. Once you reach 10,000 feet, you can turn your landing lights off. They won't be required. Then when you're descending and you pass through 10,000 feet above ground level, you can then go ahead and turn your landing lights back on. With regards to strobe lights, these come on once you get clearance to take off from tower on the runway. So for example, if somebody said to me, Alpha Victor Delta Alpha November cleared for takeoff runway 26 left, I would then go ahead and turn my strobe lights on and leave them on for the entire duration of the flight until I vacate the runway at my destination. And well, yeah, that is all for today's 15 tips and tricks for Infinite Flight. If you guys found it helpful and liked it, go ahead and slap a like on it. And if you are new around here, what's up? I am Dan. Please consider subscribing. Like I always say, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time.